All right, it's Joe Anderson here, and I'm going to interview my friend Kayvon Ethel Law. He's from Iran, and we're going to ask about his sociolinguistic uh, history here. So first off, Kayvon, yep. when you were a kid, what uh, languages did you hear growing up? Um, <clears throat> well, I lived in Iran, Tehran, um, when I was, you know, I was born there, and then I lived there until I was 10 years old, and I moved to D.C., and when I was... In Iran, I only spoke Farsi. Well, I only spoke Farsi, you know, around family, friends, and everyone. And then when I was around seven or eight, and we decided that we were going to move to America, my dad put me in some English courses. But, you know, I learned, like, some of the basics, like some of the sentence structures and everything, but I wasn't comfortable speaking at all because, you know, I didn't practice it. I would just, like, memorize vocabulary words, and then I would just go back home and speak Farsi to my family and friends. So... You know, I just learned like the basics. I wasn't, you know, improving anyway. And then when I moved to America, <clears throat> when I was 10 years old, um, I pretty much became fluent after like a year or two because everyone around me, you know, spoke English. So I was forced to like put myself out there and speak English. And, you know, obviously I was learning English, and, you know, I was going to American school and everything. So I caught on really fast. And the good thing was that most of my friends were, um, like my sister had difficulty picking up uh, English because a lot of her friends were Persian so she was speaking Farsi with her friends and at home but for me like all my friends were English so I picked it up faster because I spoke it in school I spoke it with my friends the only time I spoke Farsi was at home with my family so yeah mostly just um, English and Farsi. How long would you say it took you to learn English when you came to America? Um, it uh, like it actually picked it up really fast because I was 10 years old and at that age it's you know, it's like a lot easier to pick up language. So it took me, I would say, like a year I became comfortable with it. And like after two, three years, I became more fluent. And, but my sister came at like fourth and fifth, and, you know, she was older, so it was more difficult for her. It took her a couple of years. But uh, we're both fluent now. And, yeah. Did your parents speak English in Iran, or did they learn like in America with you guys? Well, my dad, uh, my mom didn't speak English, and she still really struggles with it because you know she came here when she was like in her 40s or 50s so she was older but um, my dad actually came to the reason I have my citizenship now is because my dad came to America and he was 15 16 for high school oh okay and yeah and then so he went to high school here for a few years and then went to college at the University of Arkansas and you know he, he got a citizenship then <clears throat> so then that's why you know when I was um, you know four or five years old he got my citizenship for me too, which is why, you know, for my sister and my mom only had a green card though. And then when we came here and, and she got her citizenship recently, so. So at home, did you and your dad ever speak English to each other at all? Did he ever help you out with that? Or was uh, it just straight when you came to America, you just you were just submerged in the American well, culture? I mean, he sort of like, like I told, like the English courses I took, you know, they gave me like homework and stuff. So when I came home, my dad would try to help me out. He would try to like teach me because my dad was fluent in English, so. He tried to like teach me some of the stuff, but you know, like I said, it was kind of like you know, like the classes. It wasn't like in, they taught me in school. I take like private classes, so it was only like once or twice a week, and you know, I wasn't really that motivated to learn English. So uh, yeah, like it only really, I only really learned English when I came to America. So okay, um, so like, do you have? Do you consider yourself having an accent? Like kind of. Um. Well. When I hear myself talk, I feel like I have an accent, but when I talk to other people, um, some of them say I have an accent, some of them say I don't. I don't know, it's weird. Like, some people, when I ask them, they say I sound American. They say, you know, I don't know if they're just trying to be nice saying that, but uh, some some people are straight up and they say that I have an accent and they can tell that I'm not American. So, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if I have an accent because I moved here when I was um, 10, so, you know. Maybe it depends on certain some of the words you say. Maybe sometimes comes out with an accent. Yeah. And the funny thing is, uh, when I actually came to America, like as I like I was fluent in writing and speaking Farsi, and but after like a year or two of being in America, like my English improved, but my Farsi, you know, got worse. Not speaking wise, because I was, you know, constantly speaking with family, but uh, writing wise, like I completely forgot to write. I can't write. You know, right now I can't even write a single word in 
course, yeah, like you got to write, write my own name. So you forgot how to write your own name. Yeah. Wow. So um, because yeah, I didn't practice it at all. Like I didn't use it. So. But like you've been writing your name for at least ten years at this point, and how, how does that <laughs> how does that happen? I don't know. Maybe like I don't know. I mean, wow. yeah. But just, yeah. can your does your sister at least? Does she still write movie courses? She yeah, like I said, um, she first of all she goes back to Iran much more than I do. Okay. So she's like more you know involved in the culture and like the speaking and writing and everything, and she actually I mean since she learned Farsi until she was you know like fourteen like I said, and then she came to America, she you know had much more experience with it than I did. So I mean she she can still write but. Unfortunately, I forgot, but um, I can still sort of read, so if I ever want to get it back, I know if I just take classes for like a month, I'll like get it back because it's like in my memory. Mm -hmm. I just got to like, you know, practice it a little bit and I'll be good. When's the last time you went back to Iran? Last time I went back to Iran, I was uh, 15. Okay. And like when I first came to America, like the first summer, my dad didn't let me come back to America because, to go back to Iran because he wanted me to uh, like not be exposed more to like the English language my friends over the summer so I can get my English better. Mm -hmm. But then the next summer I came to Iran and then every summer after that I came to Iran until I was like 16 and I stopped because over summer I need to do volunteering for college. And um, yeah, and if I came to America when I was like, when, if I went back to Iran when I was 18, I would have to like join the army and you know there's like a whole process with that so it's just easier if I did it then. So like when you went back to Iran at age 15, 16, did you noticing things that changed linguistically in your country like for example like in america the generation before us like my dad for example doesn't know what dank or dope means so when we say like oh that food is really dope or dank mm -hmm. no one has an idea what, what i'm saying so when you're wrong when you went back did you like hear new terms that you're like what does it mean yeah of course yeah i mean like i feel like in every language like there's some like slang terms that come up like for example um the word javad like one of my uh, cousins, my one of my like far uncles, his name is Javad, and that was just like you know it wasn't like all it meant was just a name, but when I went back to Iran when I was twelve, they actually like changed it and like the term Javad actually like I mean they still use it as a name but it started meaning like ratchet, mm -hmm. so whenever you would see something that was like kind of ghetto, you'd be like oh that's really Javad, so like yeah slang terms like come up and then you know so you said the farsi word javad means ratchet yeah. what and what in your opinion does ratchet actually mean ratchet um it kind of means i guess somebody that's you know like more ghetto like doesn't have class and you know yeah classless okay yeah classless yeah and so anybody with the name javad in iran you just let them say classless yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um what do you personally think of your own voice then like you know, you, do you think you have like a deep voice? Do you like your voice? Do you? Well, um, if you have an accent, know. do you think it's cool to have an accent? I don't know. Like, I don't know. I feel like it's really difficult to. I don't know. I mean, when I from what I hear when I talk, it's completely different from like when somebody films me and then I like re-listen to it. Mm -hmm. But you know, I feel like I have a deep voice and I can kind of tell I have an accent. Uh, like if an American person spoke and I spoke, I can kind of tell which ones like. Yeah, yeah. And usually yeah. having accents is a thing. So, yeah. so like, would you identify in Iran or in America? Like, do you identify with a particular kind of speech, uh, depending on the country you're in? Like, with how you talk to elders and how do you talk to? Yeah, I mean, kids? um, uh, in Iran, especially, I mean, every culture is like that. Like, they have respect around elders and like around friends that like more, you know, they chill. They're more chill. They like say whatever comes to their mind. But especially in Persian culture, like we were raised really having respect for elders. Mm -hmm. So like whenever I'm around elders, I kind of just use like, whenever I'm around elders, I use like formal words and, you know, I call them shoma instead of to, which means, you know, it's like a more formal term for them. Shoma is the plural you form? Yeah, it's elder. like, it's the plural, but it's like, if whenever you speak to an elder, you say shoma. Okay. Instead of to, to is more like informal. If you just, just yeah. talk to me, you say to, yeah. to me. Okay. So depending on people's age, you know, if they're like older, like my grandparents or my parents or my uncles and stuff, I, you know, I don't curse around them. I'm really formal, but around friends, I just curse. I'm informal. Yeah, but, um, yeah, like in America, like when I came to America, the one thing I was surprised about, like, 
and I went to like my American friends' homes. Like they always said, like shut up or whatever around family or like their grandparents or whatever. And around the ground, like it's like even around my parents or like my, you know, like this just completely, like not allowed. Like if I said shut up around the family, like I would get in a lot of trouble for it. So that's one thing I know it's different than I do around the ground. Was there anything in particular you think influences the way you talk, whether it's Persian or English? Um. Yeah, I mean, I said like the age group, and I guess, uh, depend uh, depending on like which friends I'm hanging out with, I guess like some friends, uh, like I have some Persian friends in DC. Some of them, you know, like we don't know each other, I guess as well, or you know, so, um, or I'm not as comfortable with them, so I might again a little more formal. I mean, still informal, but a little more formal. But like around like people I'm really comfortable with, then it's completely informal. Like, you know, I don't really care about what I say. I just say whatever comes to my mind. So. Okay, um, so that's kind of like depending on so it's like your style shifting, you're changing speech depending on who you're talking to and what group you're in. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then is there like a, um, for example, like with you know like a little bit of history about Iran was the Arabs invaded your country at some point, and they kind of tried to make Arabic the official language of Iran at one point. Mm -hmm. And do you find yourself ever? Like, do you understand Arabic at this point? Like, would you pick, like, you speak Farsi fluently, but do you understand any Arabic, even, like, since they invaded your country at one point? Like, well, the... Are you, are you Muslim, or...? Well, I mean, I'm Muslim, but I don't really follow the rules, you know? Like, if you're just from Iran, you're pretty much considered Muslim. Mm -hmm. My parents are more religious than I am, but... Um, yeah, I mean, Arabic, the writing styles are similar, uh, like... You know, if some, like, an Arabic person, like, writes, you know, the letters are the same, I can read it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I've had a bunch of Arab friends, whenever they speak, I can't understand anything they say, absolutely not. Uh, except, like, you know, maybe, like, the basic terms, like, salam or whatever. Mm -hmm. Or whatever I speak, they can't understand anything I say, but, yeah, so, verbally, it's different, but writing-wise, it's similar. Similar. And then, um, is there, like, a certain word in Iran or in English, for your example, that, like, it becomes like the stereotype of the language. Like, you know how Jamaican people say man and that becomes how people say man over there? Mm -hmm. Is there a certain word in Iran or English that you've heard that that? Uh, well, there are no words that are like similar to the example you said from Jamaica where it's like man or man, or at least I can't think of any. But one thing that I do find myself doing a lot is when I speak to my sister or my dad or mom, but especially my sister, I find myself incorporating a lot of English words because, um, I mean, I can still say the same thing in Farsi, but I would have to, you know, stretch the English a lot and explain the words more. But if I just incorporate some English words, it kind of like, you know, it's easier, it pretty much summarizes, you know, what I was going to say in Farsi. So I find myself doing that, like incorporating English words, or like, you know, whenever I'm speaking to family. And yeah. Okay. And then previously, you also mentioned how you change your speech according to who you're talking to. Like, you know, you don't say shut up or anything vulgar around your parents or people you respect. And you have your own way of talking to elders when you say shoma for someone who's uh, kind of above you or elderly. And you say to someone like me or a friend. So, aside from that, though, like, is there like another, is there like a fine line between formal and informal speech in Iran? Like, for example, French people, they'll say, when they say, I don't know, they say, je ne sais pas. But nowadays, they just took off the name and they just say, je sais pas. Like, mm -hmm. Is there something like that in Iran where you guys no. shorten? I mean, like, it comes down to, yeah, again, like, the formal and informal, like, going by the book or not going by the book. Like, sometimes, if I speak to someone, I can say, like, or I can say, which means, I like you a lot. Or I can just say, which means, I like you a lot again. You know, say, it's, you know, it's, same message, but depends on if you want to like shorten the language or not. Or again, depending on who you're speaking to. If you're speaking to an elder, you would say "shomaro hegustaram" because "shoma" is a more respectful term that uh, you would use. Uh, so yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things that, depending on who you're talking to, or depending on the situation, whether you want to use the long term or you want to use the short term. So, like, say for example, you want to ask someone to go to the restaurant with you. Mm -hmm. What are two ways you would say that formally and informally? Well, you can say "shoma uh, mechayin" for my being just Sudan. That's like more formal because you know "shoma" like it's more respectful. Or you can just say "bed in restaurant," which means you know it says the same thing. Like let's go to the restaurant, but 
is shortened and but like I wouldn't go up to an elder that somebody you respect and just be like bearing bidding Mr. Sudan, which is you know, because it's kind of informal. It's kind of just like you know, I mean it says the same thing again. But if I'm speaking to an elder, I'll be like Shalom Mikhan Bar Mir Sudan, which is says the same thing except it's you know, more respectful, you put more effort in the language, you know, that you're speaking to the elder and everything. Can you give like a translation of, of word by word with uh for the formal way of saying it and the yeah. informal way? Yeah. Like Shalom Mikhan Bar Mir Sudan, Shoma means do you well, Shomo means you, uh, Michain means, well, it's like kind of longer in English. Shomo, Michain means, would you like to, Berim, go, Shomo, uh, Michain, Berim, restaurant. And restaurant is just restaurant. But uh, Berim, restaurant, which is the more informal term, Berim means, let's go, and then restaurant is just restaurant. So, you know, it doesn't have the beginning part where it's like, do you like? Would you like to go to a restaurant? It's like you know. So you're negating the, like the question word itself. Mm -hmm. So in order to, like to make it a question, would you change your intonation? Like, would you say like yeah, bedding restaurant or like instead of bedding restaurant? Yeah, of course. I mean, if you um, if you just say bedding restaurant means let's go to the restaurant. If you say bedding restaurant means like you know, can I change your tone? It kind of gives it a more question like, uh, you know, becomes a question instead of just a statement. So. So it's like English how like how um, intonation actually has like meaning actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Then cave on. I think that's all I have for you. Perfect. Thanks a lot for everything, man. Thank you, Joanne. <laughs> it's been a lot. Yeah. <laughs>